Okay, so let's understand a cellular system component. You already gone through the cellular system definitions and some of the aspects of it, but in this session we can understand the components. So you understand that cellular system it's a kind of communication network, okay, just like wireless network or the or the or any other kind of networking. Um, so uh, in the communication network in this cellular system, it is the last link, okay, that is the last link which you received. Uh, so if you are having a mobile device here in this example here. This is your mobile device and this is your transmitter antenna and this is your receiver antenna. So your transmitter antenna sends some signal. It comes to the interconnected devices, router, switch, gateway and something like that. And it receives to the receiver. Then it propagates the signals to reach to your mobile device. Then this is nothing but the last link that is your wireless. Okay. So it is also written that a network is then distributed over the land areas. I already told you, told you about the geographic area, right? The uh, separation of uh, cells. Or a cluster so these uh, these land areas are nothing but cells and each cell is having one uh, mobile station not one but many mobile station and many base stations your transmitter okay and the base station resides in a cell it is used to transmit voice plus data also there is uh, some um, you know what do you call that uh, effective uh, um, kind of allocations of different frequencies so that uh, you know based on this allocations we do not interfere a kind of problem called as interference uh, so that no two frequencies get interfered with each other we have a precise uh, you know allocation technique or assignment strategies by which uh, two frequencies never hinder with each other okay these are the cellular system components i mean uh, the following aspects to understand the components we have six components you see here so one is mobile station one is air interface standard base station database security and gateway we'll understand precisely one by one okay so i'll get to the mo mobile station so mobile station uh, consists of mobile equipment plus sim that is your subscriber identity mobile okay and you will see that a mobile station is having one control unit so let me write it down here it is having one control unit so this control unit consists of it consists of your transmitter by which you are sending some data to the receiver side and an antenna system it is a reception okay so by which you can receive the signals so it is a consist of control unit and uh, control unit consists of transmitter and antenna also it is having subscriber identity module in terms of sim card so uh, this is the mobile station this is the simplest you know thing that is there in the mobile station you don't have to worry about the uh, more explored version of mobile equipment that we will precisely see in the gsm chapter but right now you just understand that we have mobile station and it consists of mobile equipment plus subscriber identity module by which a particular uh, uh, number is been allocated to the users and by which he can um, identified in the cellular network next thing is we have air interface standard so the second thing is we have air interface standard that means how we are propagating uh, or how we are dividing our signals so for division you know we had seen fdm tdm cdm and many other techniques so it consists of a tdma which is time division multiple access then fdma that is frequency division multiple access and then we have cdma which is code division multiple access so uh, by which uh, you know this is uh, basically a kind of multiple access technique you understand we have we have already seen multi multiplexing by which we are uh, you know uh, div dividing certain things just like if you are having time then we are dividing time division multiplexing if you are having frequency then we are dividing frequencies and then allocate each frequencies to the users okay and then he can walk around in a very similar way we have cdm that is code division multi multiplexing in which we are giving some specific random code to the users and by which of that he can uh, resolve the problem of error detection and error correction okay so um, uh, this tdma fdma cdm it's like very simple uh, um, uh, techniques to understand if you don't know then please go through the other youtube uh, you know channels uh, where we where they had you know provide you a good explanation on tdma fdma cdma right now this is you know a short overview of uh, cellular system components so that's why I'm, I'm not elaborating tdma fdma cdma but if you want to ex if you want to understand then you can you know just comment in the comment section i'll make an another video on tdma uh, so called multiple access techniques okay so if you have any doubt you can you know directly uh, come to the comment box and put your uh, comments i'll look after it i'll create a video on that okay so uh, this is uh, you know three main interfaces are there these are the tdma fdma cdma and the third part is going to be your base station or the uh, the third components 
which is nothing but base station. So the work of base station is to transmit the uh, voice plus data, right? So the uh, it is also known as fixed station. It is also known as fixed station in a cellular system. As you can see, this is a transmitter, and uh, we don't want to move the transmitter from one end to another end. So this is it looks something like this. This is your transmitter which you already had seen in many of the buildings or many in the geographic area it is uh, placed that way okay so this is your base station work is just to transmit and receive the signals uh, from the center side to the receiver side uh, base station is easy to understand right okay so the fourth uh, thing is we have fourth component fourth component is database which is very important so this is database and we have three types of database actually we have two types of database just to understand we have hlr and vlr we will precisely understand this uh, hlr vlr in jsm chapter but right now just you know overview so it is home location register as from the definition you will understand it's a home location register and this is nothing but visitor or the visiting location register these are the two database which exist now hlr vlr now understand hlr hlr is nothing but let's say you are in some area and you purchase a sim card so this is a sim shop and you purchase one sim for your mobile device so when you insert your sim card in your mobile device when you insert your sim card in the mobile device you are connected with some BTS that is your BTS or something called as base transceiver system or the transmitter right so you are connected with this particular thing so whenever you connect your sim card with your mobile device the uh, the request you know this request this this allocation request is sent to the HLR and HLR is the permanent database it is a permanent database which has the information which has the information of the subscriber or the user subscriber subscriber or the users just like you its billing process billing process location and the data which he is uh, using to uh, use the network services so it is a kind of permanent database which has the information about uh, about your identity okay so it is in the in this location so this particular location this particular location is your home because you have purchased the card or the sim card from this location and whenever you connect your sim card with mobile device which is you know uh, allocate some transmitter to you and this transmitter and this mobile device is in the home network that's why we have hlr and hlr is a permanent database which is having an information about your uh, your your billing cycles your location and uh, uh, what do you call that data okay so whenever you are in the home network hlr is the responsible database or hlr is the responsible uh, thing by which you are authenticated okay but now the case is if let's say you are moving from this cell in real time when you move from this cell to another cell okay so this is the another cell and your mobile device now resides in some cell 2 okay so this is cell 2 now the problem is HLR doesn't know about you where exactly you are residing right because you leave your home location and you are right now in the some foreign location you are not now in the home location you are now in the foreign location so HLR doesn't know about you where exactly you are residing so location there is a location constraint here HLR doesn't know because you leave your home so here the another database come and exist which is known as a VLR which says visiting location registers so whenever you come into the another foreign location your mobile and the sim is get is get uh, you know what do you call authenticate by vlr the request is goes to the vlr and then vlr communicates internally communicates with hlr that this is the mobile number which he wants to connect with some base station here in my cell 2 vlr will ask the hlr that some mobile number is wants to connect with some bts which is uh, which is in my cell 2 and the number is not in my database or in the in the in this cell to hlr in this cell to hlr the number is not there 
so the number uh, which is there in the cell 2 is it is it yours is it there in your database or not then hlr will authenticate that yes this number is this number it belongs to me and please provide the connections then your mobile device is going to communicate with this transmitter and you have a good uh, what do you call it? you have a good communication um, this this is the kind of authentication so in general what happened your hlr inside the home network it is connected with vlr but now if you this is this is one cell but when you move from one cell to another cell inside the inside the other cell we have hlr plus vlr but now what happened this vlr and this vlr and this hlr and this hlr they are internally connected with each other so they can pass the data that this this uh, this mobile number is coming from your database or not so they are authenticated with the help of passing the data by asking the questions so whenever you have a question that i am in a different location i am in a new york or london how can i authenticate myself actually this vlrs and mscs and bscs are internet uh, or internally connected with each other and that's why you you know you are authenticate in the different countries and the different locations so these are the two uh, databases here hlr is the permanent database however this vlr this is not a permanent database it's a temporary database okay so this is a temporary database uh, why temporary because you know you are uh, you are uh, living in a in, in this cell too for a very uh, little time for a duration of a time and then you will you know move back to your home location uh, so that's why we need a temporary database to store temporary uh, information okay so i hope you understand it the database concept now the next thing is we have something called as security mechanism so we have a fifth component as security mechanism if you don't understand the concept you can stop or pause the video and then revert it back and then again listen you will definitely get to understand but somehow if you don't understand you can you know again come back to the comments comment section and can you know provide me the feedback i will uh, try to slow down my pace or um, I'll, I'll do something for that okay so in security mechanism we have other two databases the other one is eir which is equipment identity register okay so equipment identity register this is the second database uh, sorry the first database and then we have auc which is known as authentication center authentication center okay so uh, equipment identity register it is something uh, like you already know about it uh, this database this eir database it is it identify here let me write it down here it identifies it identifies stolen altered phone stolen altered phone how can he identify because this uh, identity register it is having the numbers such as imei right you already know about this it is international mobile equipment identity okay so this by by, by means of this number uh, the your uh, mobile phone gets uh, get located okay so this is this is the database uh, in which this imei number is going to be stored well this authentication center actually it manages it manages the actual encryption actual encryption and authentication actual encryption and authentication of your data okay so this is the two database that is there in the security mechanisms so the next component we have is the gateways and gateway is the sixth i think it's the sixth component now what happened in gateway you see gateway is easy to understand you have so many gateways just in the terms of psdn then we have isdn and so many don't worry about these these things but just gateway is to if i want to explain gateway is nothing but if you are having one that phone which you call that uh, you know this is the wired connection or the wired phone i hope you know this this is bsnl and like that so you have a wired phone here bsnl and wants to connect with a mobile device now you see this is a wireless phone if you want to make this thing if you want to connect these two phone then you need a gateway here this is nothing but your gateway 
by which you can communicate with each other. Okay, so this is the gateway. I hope you understand it. Thank you so much for listening to me.